Welcome to Preserving the Fleet here at Battleship Cove. I'm Tom Lowney, Gunners Mate First Class Retired. I'm going to show you a few things today that we have started to accomplish and get moving so that way we can present our ships to you in better presentation. So, problem we have is we have the inability to reproduce items on board a ship that we need to make the ship become authentic, look, and function properly. In that process, we've gone through the process of rebuilding our print lab, a 3D printing lab here in this former birthing apartment, and we want to show you things that we can and will be doing here in the future. Paul will be coming on here shortly, and he'll be showing you the different items that we've started and what we're going to do in the future. So with that, we're going to cut right into Paul. So this week, we're in the print lab again, and we're going to be showing you the process of how we created... Uh, this is called a casualty power wrench. If you see around the ship, there's little, look like hockey pucks, where wires go in for, if the ship takes damage, you can reroute power to other parts of the ship. These are little wrenches that tie the um, bolts down on them, and they're usually at the station. There's two of them per, but they've either been taken or disappeared over the years. So we need to replicate this and literally make that out of it through 3D printing. So we're going to show you some of the processes we do to take the actual object, we're going to 3D scan it, then clean it up and actually put it on a printer and then put it back where it belongs on the ship. So if you want to come over to the computer stations, we'll show you part of that process. So basically we have our 3D scanner and we have the part itself that we want to scan. So we basically aim it at the scanner and then on the software, What's showing up in blue is actually what the scanner's seeing. So if we rotate the part, we can actually get different angles and it'll start to capture what essentially basically is a ton of little dots is what it's making. It's not actually making a model yet, it's just creating tons and tons and tons of little dots. And the end result being once we do our capture process, we come over to the other computer and it basically looks like this. If you zoom in a little bit, you can actually see all the little dots that it's made up of. And with this object, we have a couple problems because it's round. So the scanner has trouble seeing differences because it's a symmetrical object. So in this window is where we basically counter for that. We put little dots on the object and through the software, it'll take both halves and once you tell it how to mark it, you get one object. So now the software basically took both halves and made this, but if you look at it, it's incredibly rough. The surface is full of pits and it has, it doesn't look like the original where you have a nice smooth surface. So we have to clean that up. So what we'll do is open up another program that we have called Mesh Mixer and we put the object into it and now where we have a rough surface I can literally take a tool and I want to basically smooth it out now wherever I touch is actually literally going to start to smooth out the model so if I zoom in on that now you can see where I started was nice and rough, and where I was just doing it now is a polished surface. So we basically have to retouch that whole model. And then the other problem we have was the scan didn't get a really good job with the end of the tool, because that was a metal object they didn't know how to interpolate it. So we'll actually slice that off, and we'll just put that back on, which is another software we have to use, which is basically, uh, it's called Tinkercad. It's an online CAD software. So we basically put the model into here and then we just sliced off the part we didn't want. We put the rectangular end onto it and now essentially we have a model that is ready to be 3D printed. So we put that model into our slicing software which represents our printer and we just basically orientate it. It prints easiest on an upward thing because we don't have to use supports for it. So we'll put the model into our software. It's going to orient it and now we know how to print it. 
And then we send that to the printer, which is over here. We actually have one printing right now. So this has been running for about an hour and five minutes. These actually print fairly quick, but that's the actual object being printed that we just scanned, corrected, made a model, and now we're actually printing it. So we can start printing these in batches. We can actually do about 10 or 15 of these in a row. And now we have an object that we can put back on the ship. And it's the same process we would use in any object that we want to 3D scan. Some stuff we have to design by hand because we can't scan it or it's just not practical to, which we'll show you that in another video with the speaker boxes we made where we actually just did that one by hand. But we'll show you where in the ship this goes in a second and you'll get a better idea of where it goes and how we're going to use it on the ship. As you can see now, we're down below decks just above the armored deck where casualty power runs through so we can cross connect. So our actual 3D production piece can now be put right in with the other one. So now that we've printed this and this, we actually have brackets for them. So we can have them right here. You'd actually have two of them set in place. And that's where these go. Because these operate your casualty power terminals. Now you can see these have been pilfaged. Cable was taken out probably made way for the stuffing tube so they could run other power cable. But we can restore this, and this is one station to another. This one passes through the bulkhead, that's why it's slightly different, but you notice the cover's missing. So another thing that we need to reproduce is take the cover off and reproduce this. So we have some stations like this all over the ship that we can't do. So this is where the 3D print lab comes into actual practical application not just decorative. Because these were baked light, these were already similar composite base, but now we're gonna 3D print them and get this station set up. All right, so right here is, is the rack that holds the casualty power cables. So you can see they're color-coded, red, white, black. So these would be put inside here, and then you take the wrench, and you tighten that in, because it'd be black, red, white. So that way you'd be able to make sure you properly align in phase all your power. So they, these were important things on board the ship for damage control. And as you can see, they've been pilfaged and not properly identified. And we don't have enough cable because these cables were taken for other ships. So you have another example of how we can slowly, doing 3D printing, restore the ship back to what it was. I want to thank you all for coming today. And seeing what we've had and you get to see here how preserving a fleet and how this 3d print shop is so important and how paul is taking you through all the steps yep and also we'd like to add that if you are interested in this kind of volunteering program at the ship where you want to work with 3d printers or you want to donate time and material that we could use to help this program we'd like you to get in contact with us on our website uh, you'd most likely be contacting chris or megan would be the most likely two points of contact through their emails but also any kind of companies that deal with 3D printing. We're always in need of material and we're always in need of possibly newer machines because we're doing this on a very large scale right now. So if you have any ways that you could help us out there, same thing, please get in contact with us on our website and let us know if there's any way that you could actually help us out. Because when you help us out, you help yourself out because it's an education experience, it presents all the products and you can see it actually in use. So we're a living test bed for everything that we do 3D printing wise for any company or people. Yep. So we can help teach, we can help learn. It's a uh, camaraderie thing. And we can take something like this and put it into action. And as a final note too, not just the uh, volunteers, any of the other museum ships that are out there. If we Very have important. parts that we're making that you see on these videos and we can help you with these parts, get in contact with us. Because if you don't have a 3D printer where we can send you the file and make it, as long as you would pay for material and shipping, we'll make the parts for you and ship them. So just get in contact with us. If there's anything you see that you need that we're making, then we're going to be able to help you out and cooperate, and we'll get the parts out to people that can use them. Right, because we can't produce full turrets and so forth, but we're getting better. Maybe. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Thanks again very much. Hope to see you out there. And remember, like, share, subscribe. 
because doing that helps us get this information out to you because these ships, it's your history and we want to present it the best way possible. Thank you for your time. I'm Tom Lowney. I'm Paul Scalabroni. And we're here at Battleship Cove.